wake up, work out, go to school, eat, work out, sleep, wake up, work out, teach, eat, work out, sleep, wake up, work out, stay home, eat, work out, sleep. My life revolves around a routine that, when heard by first impressions, most would find quite lonely, and maybe it is. Merriam-Webster's dictionary defines alone as separated from others, isolated, whereas it defines lonely as being without company or cut off from others, solitary. To me, being alone means being physically by myself, whereas I can still feel lonely even if I'm surrounded by people. It's inherently a negative feeling or emotion rather than a physical presence. A little something about myself. I was born and raised in Hong Kong my whole life. My mother tongue is Cantonese. However, I quickly adopted English since I had most of my education from an international school, and I feel more comfortable expressing myself with it. Although Cantonese is my first language, I only spoke it at home and at church. Therefore, I only picked it up just from day-to-day -day living, instead of learning it at school. I grew up going to a Cantonese-speaking church, and have been to this day. But there was a time when I felt like language had been an issue. Therefore, I tried going to English-speaking ones. However, I felt even further from home. My local church is my home. But if language is what best conveys emotion, then English is my comfort then going to an English church should solve my issues, right? However, that just made me feel further from home, because home is what I call my local church community and the friends and family I have there. Although home is what I call them, I felt like a distant relative that will never be able to immerse myself with them because they all shared collective experiences that made them a regular Hong Konger, unlike me, such as going to local secondary schools, taking their DSEs, listening to Cantonese music, growing up with Hong Kong culture, and such. They are very accepting of my background and want me to get more involved with them. And yet, why did I still feel lonely, even though I wasn't alone? I guess our drastically different experiences in life and upbringings has unwantingly isolated me from the pack. I wasn't able to relate to them, and vice versa. I never felt 100% accepted amongst my English friends, and never 100% accepted amongst my Chinese friends. I never felt 100% home to either communities. I belonged in the cracks in between these two worlds, and it's lonely. That is what sucks about feeling lonely, even when I'm not alone. It is not like I don't have anybody, it's that nobody had me. I remember the past years being the lowest and loneliest points in my life. I was the most out of shape I had been, the laziest I had been, the most unmotivated, most depressed, and the least driven I had been. I had nothing good going on for me. As a result, I made many bad decisions in life that I couldn't take back. I would wake up late in the day and mindlessly binge watch movies and TV shows, hours on end. Ate shit food that made me feel sluggish and lazy, and watched porn daily just to feel that dopamine hit, because nothing else gave me the same rush that it did at the time. I was a miserable loser. After graduating high school, all of the friends that I had had went abroad to study, and there I was, fully alone and feeling lonely, heading into the unknown chapter known as university. I knew that I would have a hard time adapting since the community was mainly local and its culture differed from the one that I grew up with. For the first time, I didn't have anyone to be with or to help me with getting to know this university life and community unlike my experience with my local church and the first time I switched to an international school. This was the ultimate trial. How do I persevere through this state of loneliness when I'm the only one in my class who didn't have a normal Hong Kong student experience, let alone didn't feel as comfortable as I should speaking in my own mother tongue? 80% of my classes in year one and two were online, as if COVID hadn't already screwed me over in the topic of loneliness. But it was in this period where I had the most time to myself and realized that now was the time for self-care and growth as a person, to reinvent myself. I was tired of being tired. I had to stop blaming external factors in my life for my bad decisions. I realized that the only thing I have control over is myself and my actions. 
And even though it meant that I had to take on all the blame for my own shortcomings, it also meant that I had the power to change all of that. Instead of mindlessly going through TV shows and movies every day, I started listening to podcasts, lectures, and watching inspirational videos. In turn, it gave me masculine, successful, and introspective role models that I could look up to and that inspire me, which helped me mature more by understanding the world around me and made me realize that I could achieve success like they did if I worked hard on changing my mindset. I had to lose my dignity to understand that I didn't want to stay as my inadequate past self who drowned myself with unhealthy habits and complacency, but to become someone I can respect. From feeling lonely to learning to enjoy my own company, I quickly understood that the idea of loneliness and being alone dwelled in two different realms. It was in this time from 2020 to 2022 where I took my health and my ambitions seriously and instilled routine and found discipline in my life. Building good habits, finding discipline, and having a better quality of life were all things I strived for when I decided to make the most of my solitary time. James Schultz describes his mentality as drive. Drive is constant, whereas even though motivation can get you started on a goal, you can't depend on it to get you from A to B because motivation waxes and wanes. When I am alone, physical presence doesn't equate to loneliness because it allows me to dive deeper into and create a stronger relationship with myself. Since I wasn't surrounded by people and had no one to socialize with, I had this time and space to acknowledge my feelings and thoughts and to nurture and take care of myself, to focus on being better than who I once was. So what drives me? I want to be more confident, mentally stronger, more humble, more secure in myself, more caring, more selfless, healthier, fitter, a better artist, a better friend, a better son, a better man, someone my past self can be proud of. And even though I may be physically alone on this journey, I learned that I can be in good company. While strive is a more abstract idea, psychologist Carol Dweck came up with the principle called growth mindset, which is the mindset of striving to be better, to understand that you are not at the finish line yet, but striving itself is the end goal. And those that have this mindset delivers them to reach higher performances because they're focused on the effort itself. The biggest change that had the most profound impact on me as a result of cultivating a growth mindset was exercising and working out. I exercise at home instead of going to a gym because I don't give myself excuses to skip a workout just because it's inconvenient. And it's not like I have an actual gym at home. I have minimal equipment. However, that's more than enough for me. It doesn't matter how early I have to wake up, how late I have to sleep, or whether I'm staying somewhere other than home. I always make time for a workout in my day because it has become a non-negotiable standard that I have set out for myself. And it doesn't feel like a chore where I dread it every time I have to work out, but I genuinely enjoy the grind and quickly became addicted to see my body improve and progress. Day after day, night after night, no partner, no coach, no one to tell me to get up and put in the work. It is just me versus me. Although I didn't see obvious progress in the mirror day after another, when I look back at the photos of my past self, I see that I have progressed even further than I thought I did. World record marathon runner Elliot Kipchoge once said, Only the disciplined ones are free in life. If you are indisciplined, you are a slave to your moods. There were lots of days where I do not feel motivated to put in the work, but there was never a day where I wasn't consistent in my drive. The consistency to be disciplined and stick to the routine when it comes to fitness. To be focused on cultivating a growth mindset, even when my mind is preoccupied with negative thoughts, and to show up on days that are hard. As a result, I'm proud to be able to say that I haven't skipped a day of exercising for the past three years and have been doing it ever since till this day. At this point, my day doesn't feel complete unless I exercised once in the morning and another at night, or else I wouldn't be able to sleep in peace knowing that I didn't finish what I was supposed to do. Ironic, isn't it? How having a routine that brings me peace can make me feel the opposite if I don't do it. 
It's as if I'm dependent on it. When I first started this journey, yes, maybe it's to look a certain way, but working out has quickly became an outlet for me. At times when I faced stress, anxiety, depression, anger, frustration, hurt, sadness, loneliness, regret, overthinking, and mental battles with my inner thoughts. Working out has become my solace, an escape I go to to face such inner battles because pain and discomfort in my body helps quiet the pain and struggles in my head. In return, this journey of self and fitness has taught and is still teaching me that my bodily changes are just a side effect, but instead, it is about personal growth maturing and being a better version of me compared to who I was before. Transformation. The reinvention of myself mentally and physically. Accountability. To recognize that the only thing I have control over in life is my mindset. Mental health. Mental clarity and having a growth mindset to always improve and never stay complacent. Confidence. Being physically and mentally secure in myself and my identity strength, to be resilient and to push through obstacles and persevere, to not quit until the work is done. Therapy, a medicine to overcome the mental struggles and to heal the damaged wounds of my past hurt. Peace, making fitness a part of my lifestyle, falling in love with the journey, and to feel comfortable in my own presence through inner peace. These are all lessons and changes that I have unconsciously picked up and has started to seep into other aspects of my life. Fitness is more than just fitness to me. I say I enjoy and cherish my alone time, and that's true, but it's only recently in my third year of university when I actually had the opportunity to make deeper connections and made an effort to know new people that I realized spending time with others brings me much greater joy than I once thought. In hindsight, I was merely just coping with the fact that I was lonely for the first two years of university by convincing myself that I was just alone. It took making friends for me to realize that. Do I regret realizing this late? No, because if it wasn't for my period of solitary, I wouldn't have grown into the person that I am now, who has embraced my dual identity of both my Cantonese and English roots who put myself out there and try to make meaningful connections even if it scares me. To be confident and secure about the fact that even though I had a different upbringing than my peers, I could still be involved and connect with them. For a long time, I tried rejecting my Cantonese identity since I thought that sacrificing one side of me would mean that I could fully embrace my English side. But I now realize that, in reality, although both worlds offered me different things, they contributed into making my current identity and that they are both my home. Although I still do not feel 100% accepted in my new community and environment, I can feel the gap slowly closing between us as I continue on this journey of self. During the two and a half years of being alone, I had the time to nourish myself with personal interests and activities, and in return, when I finally made new friends this year, I was able to contribute value to them instead of just taking their energy in an attempt to fill my empty cup due to a lack of energy in my life if I never nourish myself. Learning to be alone helped me understand that I do not solely need other people to validate me to feel comfort, because if I depended on others for my happiness, I wouldn't be able to cultivate strong relationships if all I did was take instead of give. If it wasn't for fitness and discipline, I would have fallen into a darker place than I once was, stuck in my head, stuck in the past, unable to move forward. Truth is that everyone longs for companionship and connections with others. It doesn't matter if they are introverted or extroverted, quiet and reserved, or confident and outspoken. Have few or have many friends. As people, we all share the same desire of being connected in life because we innately want to build relationships with others because it makes us feel seen and understood. However, at the same time, we need to understand that embarking on a solitary journey with a growth mindset helps us grow as people. Learning to be comfortable with ourselves is essential for us to build such connections, and in return, be able to be in good company with those around us and ourselves.
A figure whom I admire and look up to very much is three-time Olympia champion Chris Bumstead. He once said, At the end of it all, he may just find that the trophies and money were never the prize you wanted, but rather, the journey and the mentality you built along the way was everything you ever needed. Growth is a journey of difficulty and pain, but it isn't as painful and miserable as staying in the same place, knowing that you can be so much more. I'm still making lots of mistakes and trying to learn from them, and I know that I still have a long way to go in terms of growing as a person, but I have decided to permanently make a change in my mindset for the better. What about you?